I'm sure, yeah. Well, uh, through, through the years, once I grew up here in 1954, I was born, Tom, born yeah. in, 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 well, I was born in the hospital. We lived out the Westport Road. We'd moved out the Westport Road, but my father had a shop down in Castle Street, just across from your grandfather's and your father's right. was across the street from it there, across from Ludden's. Beside it, it was owned by Pierce Carney. That big full building was owned by Pierce, and the Carneys were very, very important people. So the whole street then, growing up in the street, my father, I grew up there in the grocery shop. He opened it around 1938, 37, 38. Yes. I, you know, uh, came back from Glasgow, Covey, yeah. through and through, and himself and Peter Dever yeah. opened up uh, Hope and Endeavour grocery shop. And then Peter moved up to the top of the street where Eddie Eagle's shop is there yes. and had his grocery shop there. So they were friends all their lives. And uh, so my father then had served his time both in Westport and in Glasgow okay. and came back and opened up in Castlebar. And again, like nowadays, it mightn't seem like much, but the, the being a Covey in Castlebar was like being in a different country altogether. Yes. Westport and Castlebar. Yeah. It was like, you know, there was rivalry between Ballina and Castlebar and so on. But that was my father, and he set up the shop there. And then the first people he went to, the first customers he went to, were the nuns. He yes. went up to the convent. There was yeah. hundreds, a couple of hundred, a lot, lot of nuns, the convent of mercy. So they became friends. My mother was a boarder, and he looked for a girl to do the books. Yes. And and so my mother was recommended. So my mother, at 17 or 18 years of age, started work for my father. So that's how they met. So the history, our family, the nine children that they had, um, was very much tied up with Castle Lane. Yeah. So from Castle Lane then, uh, it, my mother died in 1967, my father died in 1970, but I had had 16 years of the shop. Yes. And it wasn't just the shop, it was the, it was the community. Yeah. It was the people that lived there, you know, and all that went on in Castle Lane. It was like the world. Yes, that did. was the world. And anything outside, even even the lower end of the town was like a, a a different place, like Lynn Hall Street was different, or yeah. Tucker Street was different, yeah. but Castle Street. So a few years later, my father died when I was 16, my mother died when I was 13. The shop was gone, the building was gone, everything was gone, and I came back as a musician in Castlebar to Castlebar. And one day I was sitting down there and um, in the, in the uh, bistro, as it was known then, probably in the 90s, and I just took out a pen and I started writing about 1954, the year I was born. And uh, it just, it was all there. This song appeared. And like I write songs and I've heard from great songwriters that sometimes it can take a long time writing songs. Sometimes it can be shorter. But yeah. sometimes real songs are as if they're just made and oh. they just come out. That they're made, you know. So that's the way this song came because it just came to my hand of the different people that were there, the different sounds I heard, the different sights that were there yes. in Castle Lane as I grew up. And and the thing is, of course, as we know, there's none of it there now, really. A, a few, a few, a few things remain. A few shops remain, including your your barber shop, your father's shop, yeah. and um, there's a, there's there's a couple of things like the, some some of the houses, but there's just a a sense of the spirits of Castle Lane, and as it was called Castle Street, it was always yeah. Castle Lane. The spirits that lived there, their their life is still around there. They're mm. still present. I can go down Castle Street there, Castle Lane, and I can just feel from Rattigan's right down to the Ivy House at the end. Yes. And I can remember everybody. I can see Pierce Carney, or I can hear Stephen Garvey or Kevin Collins, you know. Yeah. So I put all that in a song, yes. Castle Lane, the song. And uh, my good friend, Sean Harkin, who grew up a lot of his life, or his, his family lived on Castle Street down there near Leonard's, there beside yeah. May Leonard's. Sean used to look across at my father's shop and Sean talked to me about that, how much he learned from yeah. Christy, my yes. father, yeah. and, and, and so on, and the friends they were. And so, so Sean said too, it, it, it's, it's important to like document all of this mm -hmm. because, and it is in the song, as I was saying, there's a nun up in the convent said to me there, or up in the St. Oris Breeze, only a couple of weeks ago, she, she'd heard, heard the song, Castle Lane for the first time. She said, mm -hmm. it's the most wonderful way to celebrate and to document a history is in a song. She said, there's nothing like it, she said, in a song. that is really last in the, in the song. So that's how it came about. And then as regards the, uh, the book, Sound Men and Women, 
book about Mayo that, that's just that are, it's about Mayo but it's actually the picture of Dulac on the front by Michael McLaughlin great photographer from Westport and the picture on the back is of myself this is a new book as well it's the second book but there's a lot of references to Castellane in that in this book as well because they're all like quotations stories um, songs um, proverbs by people that just pass by in life again the same thing of of honoring the memory of people all people like you know and everybody tried their best everybody did their best and again like Sean Harkin has a lovely way of saying that their spirit is still in Castle Bar you know that spirit is still there and that's kind of something that I think that younger people may not quite understand simply because it wasn't their experience but the passing on of it like in song and in story in poems and in music um, become more valuable N not just to people uh, abroad but people in Castle Bar that say this is oh so this is what was here like you know it was music like lots of lots of memories of it and lots of and not just memories actual like they were like like little movies lives going on yeah. in the in castle street yeah. I, re I remember telling i remember you telling the story of growing of gr growing up in castle street and every second house you'd hear music coming out of music because a lot of accomplishments i think you mentioned stephen garvey yeah which is yeah. sean burke and yeah. one or two others it was yeah. it, it gave you a love of, of music well yeah i mean even that is true Tom. that's and that's a verse in the song where where people wouldn't realize i mean if i walked out at four o'clock like in in the shop you could yeah. set your watch that you'd hear the cello going yeah Rose Kearney would come down from teaching up in the in the convent. Rose was a yeah. teacher there all her life, and she'd come yeah. down. Next thing you'd hear this beautiful cello. I don't know what she was playing, maybe Bach or some cello suites or whatever she was playing, or maybe just airs. There was a lot of music in the Kearneys yes. and uh, and the Burks, you know, and uh, that that family. And then, as you say, go next door. I believe the Black Cats public house was a great house for singing and malt whiskey, like next door. But the next house was Sean. And and uh, Madame Burke, she oh, was yes, yes. so like as you know directly across yeah. from your shop. Yeah. Uh, you'd hear this piano music. People learn a piano, beautiful, coming out of the house, and then you go across the other side. And when you mention Stephen Garvey, like people think, oh, Stephen Garvey is in Castle Bar, you know. Stephen Garvey was the most popular musician in Ireland, yeah. and he was known in New York. Yeah. There was a sign just go on in the, in the Irish paper in New York, whatever that. Garvey is coming. You know, I think Sean Arkham was telling me again or something that yeah. he went out during the the um, the Lent. He'd go out in the, the, to New York. Yeah. Stephen was known all over Ireland. He had an orchestra. People, lots of people served their time through his orchestra, yeah. which is another thing of serving time with people. Right. And um, Stephen used to come out to our house as children. I was born in fifty four. He left Ireland in fifty eight. I think he died in fifty eight in Texas. But he went, no, he died, I think, 62 as far as I know. But 58 he left. So under the age of four, I remember Stephen Garvey coming out in a white tuxedo playing a Hammond organ. That's and the kids on the road, like yeah, in our yeah. house on the Sunday. And imagine it was like this rock star coming, yeah, like, you know, and playing this music for us, like and whatever he played. So Stephen, so across the street he was there. And then further up at Collins's shop, like Kevin Collins's uncle or father Tommy uh, JJ yes flute player piccolo player of the highest order he was a great friend of uh, uh, WB Yeats and Michael Collins and in yeah. 1933 34 he played in a band in Castle Barry Cayley band yeah. and they won the fish Sliggy and he was playing the piccolo JJ Collins yeah. I have a pic photograph of it and my auntie was playing the violin in it Thomas, yes, my mother's sister May Byrne was playing the violin there was a McNamara man there was an Egan man and there was the great woman Angela Corcoran oh, yes. who did all the, 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 the music in the town hall and yes. the music societies playing the piano in it. Yes, yes. so JJ Collins like again from Collins's music shop I remember standing there as a kid and hearing this like Fritz Kreisler music yeah. I mean this was a tremendous um, education really in music my father was a singer he sang in the opera Stephen's musical yeah. operas and the, the Mikado and that and yeah. you know the country girl and the gondoliers or the, yeah. the music yeah. in the town hall so there was a lot of music made by people themselves it wasn't imported it wasn't a kind of a outside music coming in 
there was music in people's lives, you know. Yeah. And um, your father was a great singer of Frank Sinatra songs, and your father, I, I knew that. Mm -hmm. I associated your father, Sean, with mm -hmm. music. So there was music, every, there was music everywhere on the small street. Yeah. So. And, you, and was, was it your love of, of, of playing music that, that inspired you to, to travel to many parts of the, of the, of the globe, John? Good, a, good, a good question, Tom. Yeah. Well, it was actually my survival in uh, 1970 after we moved to Dublin. My father's shop was gone and closed. He died in 1970 yeah. in April. I went to Dublin and I had been in the operas in Chum and okay. uh, so I was and Father Shannon here and Father Charles before him yeah. in the choir the town choir was extremely important like I remember all the choirs going around the, the corner singing at Christmas and back in the church and up in the hospital in the county home uh, Father Shannon we got a tremendous training from Father Shannon again so you had people like John, uh, Tommy Lawless mm -hmm. you know and Jimmy Riley and you know um, all Mr. Brett, we call that the Mr. Brett and Tom McGrail and you know, all these kind of older men in the town. Yes, the, 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 the parents of my generation of, yeah. of children, you know, Tommy Brett, like from, from yeah. Dallas Terrace and stuff. And they were all tremendous tenors and basses. Yeah. And there was never a note written. I yeah. did like four part harmonies like that. So we yeah. learned all that back in the old brother school of Father Shannon. Yes. And and Sean O'Connell used to play the organ in the church. He was a beautiful organist, you know, lived in Chapel Street. Yeah. So there was all that background of music, but I never played an instrument until I went to Dublin at 16 years of age. Yeah. And then I just got a guitar, I taught myself, mm. I started singing, you know, the songs of the day of Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen, and I, I learned all those, and some Irish ballads as well, and uh, started playing traditional got interested in my own traditional music as in the Irish language and that brought me to London and so it was really it was like all the Charlotte's was the, the opera yeah. okay, yes, yeah. football as well like yeah, and yeah. so I was fortunate to be you know fairly good at football I played for for Mitchells and Celtic when I was young but you know underage like yeah, yeah. but I would have been a, I would have been regarded as a very good player yeah. uh, but um because of my father, because of the, the moving and all that, the, the, the football went and the music came in. Yeah. So I started playing music at 16 and that's what I've done since. And then when I started playing the guitar, I found that I understood how to play a lot of other instruments so I could teach. I was teaching traditional music then for, you know, like loads of kids in West Mayo when I came back from London in the middle 70s, late oh, yeah, 70s. Yeah. And that's when I started writing as well. So I wrote uh, a book already about about that world and yes. the world of, of teaching, of passing on music, and and passing on in a way the the beauty of that I grew up with. Yes. Like there was a lot of loss, like my parents died when I was young. There was not that, but there was a huge amount of of, of music, and there was soccer as well, yeah, and there was Gaelic football as well, like, which I loved. Yeah. Both were intertwined, but there was a tremendous beauty about Castle Street and the houses and the people and Castle Bar yeah. as a place was a very to this day that I, I love and that's where I meet with Sean Harkin as well yeah, yeah. who I'd regard as yeah. really a wonderful man and his wife Mary too yeah. like in your memories of all that yeah. so the music kind of brings that together yeah, in yeah. some way Tom it's sort of is, yeah. is an expression yeah we were just talking earlier when when you when you walk down Castle Street now today or whatever yeah it's it's unrecognizable from the time you grew up absolutely yeah, yeah. I mean but that's not the that's that's but, like, but how do you feel about that <laughs> well I, I don't mind I don't you know I don't have a um, I don't have I wouldn't regard nostalgia as yeah. being a kind of a very valuable yes. thing you know but I would regard memory yeah. I would re regard remembering, like for example, remembering Stephen Garvey, yeah. remembering Sean O'Connell, yeah, yes. you know, remembering, you know, in the same way as people would remember Mick Flanagan or yeah. people would remember, you know, Paddy yeah. Friendly that yes, yeah. in football or Josie Feeney like in soccer, yeah, you know, yeah, that's right. like I would have great value in remembering it, but not saying it was better then than it is now, not comparing the two, but just I would be very, which is one of the reasons I'm talking or writing yeah. and singing is that I would be very conscious of of uh, thanking the people that passed on yes. the goodness to me, including your own family. Yeah. You know, like uh, I have three generations getting me haircut in your shop, and I go in and I and I love it. I mean, it, may, it mightn't seem like you know a huge thing, but yeah. to me, it's a wonderful thing. Your grandfather, your father, your brother, yeah. and I value 
people. Mm-hmm. I value the lives that people in Castle Street lived. I can see like Packy Gilcorse and the Luttons and Ted Norris and, and, you know, and Stuart up at the top. I can value all those people yes. um, because I think they're not really gone anywhere yes. in a way, Tom. Yeah. The, the spirits are all around. <laughs> so in Castle Bar, I can say, oh yeah, the Main Street isn't the same and North Street is the same. I suppose that's, that's, that's the same that's right. everywhere. Yeah. And change, there's change. But not that much either. Yeah, it's yeah. not that different. It's still about people at the end of the day. Yes. At it's the end of the day. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. And they're, they're yeah. buildings and the buildings are what they are. But in my heart, I think the, the, yeah. the crucial thing for me is having the memory in yourself yes, yes. and sharing that memory with people. Like I go down to the Sacred Heart Home. I've always connected yeah. with the Sacred Heart Home and down there on Thursday morning with the choir and sing in the choir there, you know, Ernie Sweeney and, yeah. you know, and Jimmy Feeney and, yes, yes. you know, and, and Catherine Clark, Jenny Carr. It's, it's a very nice thing to go down there mm. and to sing for the older people. Yes. I've done it all my life, you yeah. know, and to play. And um, that's really where I would consider it just being alive in Castle Bar yeah. and having a love for the place in Loch Lana and that, you know, mm. not romanticising it either yeah, in the sense of saying, you know, yeah. I could say, I could see loads of things that I'd say, oh, that was different or this. But not really, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be quite... Yeah. content yeah. to be from here not wanting to be from I was never wanted to be from somewhere no. else yeah. even singing music I didn't want to be like somebody from Nashville or of course somebody indeed, from yeah. Yeah. Dublin or something yeah. you know so yeah. that's kind of I'd be kind of proud of it in a yeah. certain in a way you yeah, know course, yeah. without being you know overtly sort of whatever I, I yeah. yeah I'm from here you know yeah. so, so. But as, well, as well as having a book out John you've also a new CD on the market as well just, just tell us a little bit about that the new, the new CD is, is called it's from a, a it's from a Shannockle in Ackle yes a proverb which I, I I have great fondness for the Irish language and I have great fondness for the um, the, the Shannockle the proverb because I think proverbs said said things in a very short way I think they were they were said to teach people but to express things very directly. Uh, for example, the proverb for this is um, facing east, heading west. Uh, in other words, I'm facing east, but I'm heading west. Yes, yeah. Like, for example, there's that, that to me, that's like Eastern. That's like, I'm very interested in J- Japan and Zen Buddhism and, uh-huh. J- and mysticism from you know, the east, as well as Shanukul from Akil or from Nathan, you know. Yes. Uh, so I've always loved that, you know, Molinoy Gagus Chukashid, like like praise the youth and they will respond. Like it's much nicer in Irish. So that's what this new C D is about really. It's playing music with people that I've played with a long time. There's about twelve musicians on it. Yeah. Two have passed away and it's only made last November twelve yeah. months. And where was that photograph taken, Jack? That photograph was taken in, in Parik and Rosaline Wards, the lock in in Partry. Oh, okay, okay. It was live, you know, yeah. it was live in Partry. Great music musician is Rosaline and Parik is her husband. And great food and great people, Sligo people. But there's music. Now, that music is like traditional music to, you know, music from East Mayo. My mother came from outside Knock. So a lot of this music is playing music with people from the East of Mayo, from Knock and around there. And, East Mayo, Sligo, South Sligo, but even like Bunny Conlon and Kilmovi, or not Kilmovi, um, Jimmy Murphy, God rest his soul, Jimmy came from down Milik. Mm. So there's musicians coming together playing this music that isn't the music I grew up with directly, mm. traditional fiddle, flute music, uh, that, but it is music that my mother grew up with. Mm. And the, so then there's a connection with the knock where my mother was born. My mother was born in New Anton Street, but her father came from outside Knock, James Byrne, Clun Tariff. So there's an East Mayo connection as well as West Mayo. So that's what this is about, facing East but looking West, or facing West, looking East. It's kind of a mixture of the two, and a traditional music that this music I'm playing with friends here, I would have heard it first in London, exile again. Yes. So I haven't lived in exile, Tom, uh, no. where I heard Irish music in London in the 70s, and heard the Irish language, even though I learned it in school, but oh. wasn't I didn't the way it was given, both the music and the language didn't appeal to me. But oh. when I heard it played like this, so that's what this is about. And it also has the song about the Mal, a new song about the Mal, yes. which is similar to Castellane, yes. 
you know, there's songs that I've written on it as well, like that. And it, it, would, it would have been your, your, the playground of yours when, when you were growing up. The it, it all tremendously important, Tom. The yeah. man was really important. Like it was really where my heart was, and mm-hmm. I considered sort of heart of Castle Barn, mm-hmm. the man. Because that's where we played soccer. Yes, indeed. You know, and it was powerful. And then my father's white coat would appear around the corner and be called down to the shop again. Yeah. I had to go down to the shop and work, <laughs> you know. But we played soccer, and I mentioned three people in the song about the male in the soccer world. And one is across the road here, Jerry Stanton, even though he's a Westerner sure, by the Covey man. But he played, we played soccer together. But two other who were the best soccer players I played with on the mall, yeah. Alfie Killeen and Bear Brady. Oh. And they were, they, they were both passed away now. Yeah. Tremendous soccer players. But also the mall, then I talk about everything from, from uh, John Wesley to Michael Davis to the nuns to Ernie O'Malley to... Uh, the Murphys, you know, all the different people, yeah. and Margaret Burke Sheridan, sure, course, who yeah. was known, you know, so all the different souls around the Mall, the same as we're saying with Castle Street, yeah. like all the different people that lived around the Mall, you know, and the Pellies, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, all these people I knew growing up, and the, um, the library, and, everybody, and the people in the library, and that, you know, Richie, the came, yeah. you know, and Austin. Bon and uh, Ivor Hamrock, you know, yeah. I mentioned those people. So it's kind of thanking people. They're there all the time, yes, and it's yeah. kind of going around. And it's it's something that is a very old tradition: is singing people yeah. into creation time. You know, it's yeah. like kind of singing, you know, sitting here and singing a song for you and that. You know, yeah, yeah. Tell, it's telling the stories in song. So yeah. that's what this is about. It's it's traditional, yes. and it was made by this group of musicians and myself. And with the backing of of people in Connecticut, New York, outside oh, New York, that I go to teach every year, and uh, for twenty years, more twenty five years in Connecticut, and they sponsored it. So it was made for them, really. Yeah. And the poor couple that that were over that, that were the people who were closer to, they passed away just when it, before it was made, so they didn't hear it. Yeah. Greg Burnett and Claire Burnett were their names, great yeah. friends in. Uh, Eastern or well in, yeah. in Fairfield, Connecticut. Yeah. But I've gone to every year for That's years good. teaching. One really of the stops I that I go to yeah. in my travels. Yes, yeah. You see. So yeah. that's what that yeah. facing the east, heading west is yeah. about, you know. Yeah. Could, 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 I, could I ask you one final question, John? Sure, just yeah. You you come across as a very content individual, a very content person. What's your what's this, what's your secret to a happy <laughs> happy life? <laughs> uh, well it's lovely to, to hear that hear you say that because um most of the time I am contented because I'd say that I'd say learning learning to um, be at peace with yourself mm. rather than you know trying to get everything in I think in order to get at peace with yourself the music helps but I think getting true to yourself uh, is, is getting becoming closer to whatever you believe in yes you know mm. and I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not saying that it's kind of like a close, like a, like a religious closeness like that. But I. But the reason for contentment for me, is I would I would put it down to being at peace with myself. So in order to do that, I have to. Um, I have to. You, you know, it's 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 like fitness, really. Mm-hmm. It's like a fitness to continue to to be honest, or, you mm-hmm. know, and to be as loving toward and to try, just try. To, to treat people the best you can and treat myself the best I can. Mm-hmm. So, and so that's the key to it really, Thomas, yes. is like to have like mm-hmm. compassion for yourself. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not easy. We're, we're kind of taught, you know, self-praise is no praise and things like that. Because <laughs> a friend of mine says, self-praise is the only praise. Yeah. But I think to be kind, to learn to be kind to yourself and do the best you can. Yeah. And not to, you know, increasingly now I notice that I'm not worried yeah. about what somebody says and I'm never you know I'm 69 like so it's kind of it's kind of getting on now in the games and when the second half like you know <laughs> so so like you want to, I, I don't worry about yeah. what it's it's very interesting coming from a grocery shop as well yeah. where it was all about the customer as you know yeah. the whole thing was a whole world that looked out and, and the takings at the end of the day are not out correct yeah, yeah which pain, is fair enough yeah. like I mean I mean yeah. I'm not kind of a post you yeah. know of whatever earning a living etc yes. like that but, but, but at the end of the day, what, I, what I'd have written and singing about Castle Lane would be much more singing something that would be kind of my own way of seeing things, like a child, you know, my own way of looking at things, and my own, finding my own way 
it's not the best or it's not the worst, but it's my way. Mm -hmm. And that there's great peace in that, really, mm -hmm. you know, rather than having to be judged or yeah. to judge. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's hard enough to answer that about peace because, you know, I might be peaceful all the time, but most of it, you yeah, know, yeah, most of the time yeah, I yeah. kind of understand, well, you know, I'm all right. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Not, not, yeah, not, not, not better than anybody or worse than anybody. It's kind of a, you know, a middle place yeah. like that. But it's a good place, a good place to be like, to good. be honest. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is a pleasure having the chat with you, John. The same, the self same as that. I think it's the same time. It's lovely yeah. to have a chat. Mm -hmm. it's in a way, we're you see, we're connected, yeah. even with the chat. Like, I mean, I feel very free, like talking yeah. to you. You know, mm -hmm. like. And, yeah. Oh yeah, it's lovely having the chat. Yeah, yeah, thanks indeed. So I'll try.